few months ago I did a review for Chicken Little which covered what happened in his life in the movie, or at least as much as the game gave us. In that same review I mentioned that Chicken Little also got another game that was based on the movie that was based off of his life, which isn't really correct for the most part, but you know how Hollywood is. They'll mess up a lot of adaptations no matter how good they originally are. <clears throat> Regardless of that though, we have ourselves a game that is based off of a movie inside of a movie itself, which doesn't happen very often. This cinematic universe inside of Chicken Little was actually going to be expanded upon more because alongside this game, there was plans for a movie for this cinematic universe, however that never came to fruition. But today, we'll be looking at Chicken Little Ace in action to find out if Disney should have went further with their endeavors. Ace and his intergalactic team, the Battle Barn, get a message from Warden Buff Ruff from the Pluto Planetary Penitentiary about the prison being overrun. The cargo bobs have all malfunctioned. These prison walls were breached. It's up to Commander Ace Little and his crew to find out why. Together, they will embark on a perilous epic space odyssey of impending doom and search for a secret yo, yo, weapon. Yo, 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 I'm, I'm the one doing the reviews galaxy. right now. Yeah, this caught me off guard too because apparently. Everything takes place in a video game Chicken Little and his friends ended up borrowing from Fish. It's the prequel to the game loosely based on the movie which was even more loosely based on our lives. Okay, first you guys want to interrupt and explain the story and now you're also making the same jokes that I would make in my videos. I might as well not even be here. Can I please do my own video instead of having the fourth wall break within the fourth wall? That's like 16 walls. Oh, don't you start with this game serves more as an origin story for Ace since all the literal screen time he got was at the very end of the Chicken Little movie. It's a pretty standard space story about how Foxy Loxy, or the Hollywood version of her as the IMDB page calls it, is trying to rule the galaxy. It's one of those stories that the player isn't really supposed to take seriously, which isn't a bad thing, and it's hard to take this game seriously when you go to places with names like Pluto Planetary Penitentiary and Dank Laboratories. I'm serious when I say, that is not a dank meme channel, which if that becomes one, credit me and give me part of the profit. In terms of voice acting, most of the characters are voiced by the same people. Most of the new voices are for new characters in the game, obviously, who do good jobs for their roles. However, both runs are different, well, at least one of them is. The Hollywood version isn't credited in this game, which is, you know, annoying when I'm trying to give these reviews, and the real one is done by a different person by the name of Roger Craig Smith. And if you somehow don't know who that is... Super Sonic Style! But we've also got TV's Adam West. Rest in peace, by the way. Also, I would add that one scene from Fairly Odd Parents, but it's somehow impossible to find. And if you don't know what scene I'm talking about, I feel sorry for you. The models are nice with music that fits for the space setting and shooter action genre that the movie tries to work off of. I mean the movie and the movie, by the way. I really hope that you've been able to keep up so far because my goodness, it it's confusing having to explain it. I also want to add that depending on the version you play, Chicken Little will either be using the Wii Remote or a regular controller, which is a nice touch. Now you should already know about the fourth wall breaks due to the earlier interruptions, but Chicken Little and his friends give commentary from time to time about certain things in the game and them enjoying the game, for the most part. They usually talk about the characters, events in the stories, and also poke fun at some convenient things that happen in the game. Why don't you ever ask me to play? Because. Girls don't like playing video games. Au contraire. Modern Mallard says that more and more girls are playing games every day because they're mentally- They also bring up controversy, so there's that too. You are able to play as four different characters as you go through missions. Ace has run and gun levels where you have to shoot down any enemy you run into while dodging their attacks and do lots of platforming along walls, using a jet boost, and getting past walls and doors by breaking them down. These also are the longest levels in the game, which makes sense given that this game is mostly about Ace rather than the other characters. Some machines will need to be hacked, which is where Fish comes in, and to be honest I didn't notice that it was Fish doing this until I looked in the top left and noticed that the icon was changed. Anyways. Fish must shoot colored orbs into a tumbler that has the corresponding color of the orb you shoot. You will also have some resistance, the antibodies that will slowly crawl up to you. You will have to shoot them down in order to get rid of them. There is also a chance of you getting a multicolored Omnicoat orb, which can go with any color or can take out an enemy with one shot. If you're surrounded, you have a burst attack that gets rid of them, but they will reappear a distance away, so you will have to deal with them at some point. Abby controls a spaceship that flies around, usually in space. I mean, no doubt, what else is a spaceship made for? The spaceship can shoot things, but it can also do a variety of actions. It mainly depends on the level she's on, but she's able to get rid of mines and open doors. Runt drives in a tank, which is, of course, used to destroy everything in sight that does or doesn't move. 
He also has a battering ram used to break down barriers and in general is used for faster movement. There are a few times where he controls an anti-air gun and takes out aerial enemies. Everyone has a secondary weapon which usually just results in some kind of explosion. While destroying the environment and beating enemies, you will collect a corneum. A corneum can be used to get upgrades to all of the playable characters, aside from Fish. He doesn't get anything. These upgrades include more health, faster fire rate, more damage, and more powerful secondary weapons. It can also get you concept art, music, and minigames. At the end of every level, you get a score based on completion of the mission and the bonuses you can get. These bonuses are things like beating the level in a certain amount of time, and collecting hidden objects and mega acornium. The score is then converted into acornium. The controls are really responsive. I'm mentioning the responsiveness because of the fact that I'm playing this game on the Wii version. The controls to me never felt counterintuitive to what I wanted to do. Due to this, the gameplay is satisfying for the most part with lots of high paced action across all types of shooting, especially with the fact that you can shoot so many things in the environment, which only adds to the game. The upgrades you get do feel like they make a difference in terms of what you are able to do and how you can approach enemies. Plus, for Ace, his gun will actually look different depending on what you buy. A nice touch that I always appreciate. This game also makes sure that you are aware that you're not supposed to take this game seriously. If Adam West's voice acting and the story including places like DANK LABORATORIES wasn't enough to convince you, a commentary that is given by Chicken Little and his friends helps solidify that point. Their inputs occur often enough to remind you that they are playing the game, but aren't too often to the point where they feel obnoxious. And there is a very, very fine line between the two. The things they say and do in cutscenes are also funny sometimes because most gamers have relatively done the same things that they did and had the same thoughts as they did when they were playing a game. I... I don't know how it happened but- Hey! What? What are you doing? Skipping the movie. We could be missing vital information! Come on! They're boring and never advance the plot! Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks for coming over and passing that level for us, fish! Have fun at swimming lessons! Dodging and using melee attacks as Ace has no purpose. Dodging has the same speed as moving normally and it doesn't give you an incredible distance when doing it. There might as well not even be a dodge in the game because it doesn't really affect anything. I was able to dodge most of the objects in the game by simply just moving out of the way. Melee attacks are pointless because I activated them on accident since meleeing and shooting are the same button, but enemies just got close to me. I'm usually backing up when I'm shooting so my melee attacks miss more often than they connected. I ended up hardly using it because I didn't feel like it was really necessary, especially with the fact that I could just shoot enemies from a good 5 yards away. And yes, while melee hits are stronger, at the same time, you don't have to reload ammo so there's really no reason for you to advance forward. And if you miss your melee attack, you have to wait a little bit before you're able to do anything. So for me, meleeing just didn't feel worth it at all. The anti-air portions as runt are bad. These are the only parts of the game that uses the control stick to aim, which wouldn't be bad if I wasn't playing on the Wii version, where the rest of the time, I was actually aiming. Compared to everything else, it's stiff and you're not able to move at all. There's also an auto-scroller level for this, and I already hate auto-scroller levels to begin with, but with the anti-air portions, you can't move at all. So there will be segments where you do nothing, but wait for enemies to show up, and it's boring. This game has frame rate issues. It's usually during the runt levels and a very small amount of times in other gameplay types, but the drops don't affect gameplay to the point where aiming and movement is impossible, which is the most important thing, so I don't mind it that much. Ammo can only be picked up if it correlates with the current one you have, which can't be changed if you upgrade it. Grabbing incorrect ammo gives you a corneum though, so you'll at least get stuff for upgrades or the collectibles that you can purchase. Explosions can block your view and reticle pretty easily, making it harder to tell where you're aiming at times. Given that this game is mostly a shooter, knowing where you're aiming is pretty important. However, it was usually never a life or death situation due to that, and I was able to hit things by going off of where I was aiming previously, so I was able to deal with it just fine. But if you're not used to something like that, then I can see why that's a really big issue. This game was actually a pretty good surprise and I had more fun with it than I expected to. My somewhat pessimistic outlook going into this game was mainly based off of my review of the first Chicken Little game, which if you haven't seen, make sure you watch after this video. This game manages to be an enjoyable experience even with some of the issues that I had, and while there are some things that I wish this game did better, it overall did better than what the original Chicken Little game did for me, and that's really all I can ask for. Somehow, the very small portion at the end of this movie ended up turning into a pretty good game with its own identity. Now, would people pay to see a movie about Ace? 
maybe, just maybe, but definitely not today, so it's never gonna happen. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me the Frozen Cavern, and thank you for making it to the end of this video. Now, I figured that I would just get Chicken Little A's in action out of the way, because I don't feel like this game is going to be as hype as some of my other reviews that I have planned in the future, or even in terms of some reviews that I've already done. But I figured I would get that out of the way, that way I don't have to focus on Chicken Little games anymore, because these are the only two games that exist. So now I'm able to move on to anything else that I have planned, or want to have planned in the future. But just because Chicken Little is over does not mean I won't cover other Disney games. There's plenty of Disney games that I can cover, and there's some that I really do want to cover anyways. So don't think that just because Chicken Little is done, I'm not going to do Disney games. That's kind of weird, especially for a license-based game series. Disney's probably like one of the first ones that you would think of. But anyways, my social media is all in the description. My Twitter, Instagram, Discord, and Facebook are all in the description, so make sure you go there. That way you're able to keep up to date on whenever I upload a video and see how much of a meme I am off screen. It's pretty bad. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as share with your friends and family. I'm trying to reach 1k by April, I guess? I don't exactly know when the best time to reach it would be, but I'll try and reach it by April. Don't know what will happen, but who knows. But anyways, until next video, take care.